Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Inkspot review. And in today's Inkspot, we're going to be looking at a Sailor Ink. Now, this is the first Sailor Ink that I've reviewed as part of the Inkspot. Uh, and it's one of the new Sailor Gentle Inks, J-E-N-T-L-E. -E. So these, this is the uh, Sailor Okuyama. This is the kind of the replacement ink for the much beloved Sailor Gentle Grenade, which is kind of a maroon pomegranate colored ink. Um, comes in this really nice uh, package here the, with nice printed cardboard. And if you give me just a second, I can show you here is the Sailor Gentle Grenade. So I have to say I like the new packages a lot better. This is the, the Seasons, uh, Four Seasons version of the Gentle Inks. Uh, now, clearly this is a Japanese ink because the whole bottle is in Japanese and the only <laughs> thing in English is Sailor Gentle Ink. Even the name of the ink, these are all stickers that are applied uh, I bought this at Anderson Pens. So uh, open it up, and it is the fairly standard bottle shape of Sailor's inks. Now, these bottles are interesting. They're not a great shape for filling an ink or uh, filling your pen because they're squat and really not very tall, um, which means that you, it's not super deep for filling up your pen. It's a 50 milliliter bottle. Uh, inside, they do have this little plastic cone. So the thought is you turn the pen upside down and then turn it or turn the bottle upside down, turn it right side up, and that cone will fill with ink. I find the cone too narrow for my larger nibbed pens. Uh, I actually really don't care for that little plastic cone. I'd rather they just not put it in there at all. But um, so pretty bottle, but not my favorite in terms of functionality. So this Sailor Okuyama is is a, a kind of a maroon colored ink, dark, dark red. So um, I'm going to go ahead and write the uh, write with it in a bunch of different pens just to show you how it looks, and then I'll go you through go through the full written test with you and show you how it performed on different kinds of paper. So to start off with, this is a Jinhao five ninety nine. This is in fine. Okuyama. Then we have for a medium pen La Mi Vista. And then a broad nib. We have a one point one millimeter stub. A one point five millimeter stub. Oh, I always do that. This is not a Monteverde, this is a Twisby. This is 1.5. We have a flex nib. This is the Technically, it's the Falcon nib. And this is Sailor Oku Yama. And last but not least, we have, get the ink flowing here, a 
pilot parallels 2.4 millimeter All right, so as you can see, this is a really lovely kind of deep red. Uh, you know, I keep coming back to the whole pomegranate color. So the Sailor Gentle Grenade, which was a very similar color, and I'm going to show you some comparison swatches in a little bit. Um, a lot of people thought the grenade actually meant uh, pomegranate. That's where that comes from, you know, grenadine, etc. cetera. Uh, so... That's the color I've always associated with this. It's kind of a pomegranate color. It's maroon, but it's got a little bit of an undertone of blue. And you can actually see that in the chromatography that I did here. So started down here, and you can see there's some blue. Then you move into a kind of a magenta, solid red, really dark reddish maroon, and then more blue and purple up here toward the top. So this is a fairly complex ink in terms of color. Um, and uh, it's it's really quite nice. If if you get a slightly drier pen, uh, you can see it, it moves a little toward like a raspberry, almost pinkish color here. But the wetter you get, it gets really dark. Now, one thing of note is what happened here on the Custom 912. Now, I've used the Custom 912 with several different inks. Um, I have never had railroading quite as bad as I did with this ink. This For some reason, this ink just does not like the the flex on this particular pen. I don't know if the surface tension in the ink is not not high enough or, or what the deal is, but I got a lot more railroading in this ink than I did uh, with any other ink that I've put in this pen, which is kind of interesting. Um, so that is the writing. Now let me walk you through the different papers that I have, uh, or the, the tests on different paper. We'll start with um, Rhodia. So you can see here, we've got Sailor Genta Okuyama. Now, you can probably see this on the video. One of the things that makes this ink special, besides this nice rich color, is this ink has just incredible greenish gold sheen. Uh, much like Sailor Gentle Grenade did, this ink sheens like crazy, uh, which I love. Some people think it looks like an oil slick on the paper. I love the sheen. So you can see here, we've got the same pens that I just used. Uh, very little bleed, um, and I can show you what little bleed I did get was on the real heavy writing. Really nice color, no feathering, felt large, uh, pretty lubricated, nice deep saturated color. There's some shading, but not as much as, you know, I might like. You can see it real he heavily down here. Um, nice high sheen and um, pretty good on the show through. The dry times were a little long on Rhodia paper, so I was still getting a little bit of smudging at 25 seconds. At 30, it's basically clean there. And then we go down to the, the water, the water fast and chemical test. So um, if it's just water, it does pretty well. Now, I accidentally dropped a, a drop of bleach here, which is why this is completely gone. Um, but you can see bleach will clean this ink right off. And then ammonia doesn't seem to do as good a job and I just dropped pure bleach and pure ammonia on these two to see how it would react. And then you can see, you know, even down here, uh, I flexible, that's, there's supposed to be an X in there. Flexible Fred farted furiously for freedom. Uh, you could see a lot of railroading in there and I went pretty slow on this writing. So again, this just doesn't like the, uh, the flex nib for some reason, and then another drop of water there, or a drop of bleach there that that uh, blotted out my boat. Uh, okay, so that is Rhodia paper. It's I like this on Rhodia paper quite a bit. It actually performs uh, well, aside from the low, the long dry times, the the sheen, the the color, the saturation. It all looks quite nice on this Rhodia paper. But man, look at that sheen! Whew. that is a sheen right there. Okay. Let's go over to cheap copy paper. This is Staples 75 gram photocopy paper. I think we can see a uh, bleed city or a feather city here. You can see it's uh, lots of feathering, although it's not as bad as I've seen in other inks. 
Um, you lose a lot of variation in the color. It tends to be a little more muted, a little bit more uh, bluish and a little darker in this paper because it just gets absorbed right in. So there's no shading to speak of. Bleed is pretty bad, uh, as as would be expected here. Even, you know, you got a little bit of bleed on medium or on, uh, so that, that would be fine. Even a little bit of bleed on the finest nib there, a little bit on medium, a little bit on broad, and then it gets really bad after that. Uh, color's still pretty good, though. It's not quite as vibrant, but pretty good. Feathering, it's not great. Uh, lubrication feels a little less lubricated on this paper, again, largely because it was probably absorbed right away and can't lubricate the pen. Um, still pretty saturated, but there's no sh uh, shading and zero sheen, and the show through is bad when it's, it's, it's okay when it's not bleeding. Um, so at two seconds, it was still uh, a little bit of a blur. There's just a tiny little bit of a smudge on the five seconds and at 10 seconds, it's completely there. Uh, more water fast on inexpensive paper. So you can see, and it, it's interesting because the, the red component seemed to go away, but the bluish component seemed to, to remain behind with water. Again, bleach just cleans this right off and ammonia doesn't seem to have much more impact than water does. Um, so uh, again, you can see on wet writing, the feathering is pretty foul, but I'm ching, instantrimshot.com. Uh, so there is the cheap copy paper. And finally, Tomoe River. Now, Tomoe River, as we all know, is all about uh, sheen. So if you can't get sheen on any other paper, or if you can get it on any other paper on Tomoe River, it's going to be kind of nutsoid. And uh, the same follows true here. It's so heavy, it almost changes the color of the ink. You can see it here on this paper. The sheen is just, it's incredible on this paper. So if you like sheen, this is one you're going to want to look at. Um, nice, rich color here. Uh, it may be hard to tell. I'll try to color balance this as best I can, but the ink does appear to be slightly more red than on the, the really Staples copy paper. So if you look at them side by side, this is the bluest of all of them, then this, then this. Uh, this has a little bit more of the red to it. And that may be because of the yellow and, and green components of the gold are, are so highlighted here. Uh, you can see the different writings. And again, with the All-Star, it tends to get a little, this a little wider, but it's not super wet. Again, fairly long dry times here. No bleed, very good color, no feathering, good lubrication, nice saturation. The sheeting, shading seems to be a little less on Tomoe River than it is on Rhodia. Um, amazing sheen and uh, only just a little tiny bit of show through. Now on super wet, it does bleed through here, but on, on the regular writing, even down here, there's only just like a tiny little bit of bleed through there. So... And uh, fairly similar results on the tests here. We've got the drip test, which leaves a little bit of kind of bluish purple behind. The rub test, the bleach test, which wipes it clean. And the ammonia test, which leaves kind of a shadow. And uh, I would apologize for my attempts at some sort of calligraphy, but, you know, whatever. It's, it's bad. I know it's bad. I'm at peace with that. And again, right here, you see... I could have pushed the nib further, but this ink for some reason just doesn't seem to keep up with that flex. So to kind of finish up, I wanted to show you if this ink, if you like this ink, but it's not available, or if you want to see what some other options are, I've got a bunch of cards. So this is Sailor Gentle Okuyama. And by comparison, this is Sailor Gentle Grenade. They're very, you know, quite close in, in comparison. Then we have uh, Mont Blanc Burgundy Red, which is a little bit less saturated, a little bit more blue. And Graf von Faber-Castell's Garnet Red, um, which is a little bit, uh, again, a little bit more bluish and a little bit less saturated. Uh, then we have Diamine, Diamine, excuse me, Syrah, and Diamine Red Dragon, Diamine Oxblood, and then just for comparison's sake, Ancient Copper, which has a lot more orange in it. I would say probably the closest in color are going to be the Sailor Gentle Grenade and the Sailor Okuyama, but Gentle Grenade isn't being made any longer. Um, aside from that, you're probably looking at these four as 
fairly close comparisons. The graph on Faber-Castell tends to run very dry for me. Mont Blanc Burgundy Red, I wish it was just a touch more saturated. I actually, Of all of these, I think the Gentle Okuyama is my favorite in this burgundy maroon color. Um, now, this Red Dragon is, is similar, but it's a little more red and a little less maroonish. So... Uh, that is my review of the Sailor Gentle Okuyama. I like this ink a lot. I actually think I'll be playing around with it a little bit more. Um, the only real downsides that I had with it were that the it doesn't seem to like this flex nib very much, and it has a fairly long dry time. But man, the sheen. The sheen. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below in the comment section or in the description. There's a link over to penhabit.com. You can click over there and leave your uh, comments on that page. And if you have any other questions, send them to me at penhabit at gmail.com. Thank you so much as always for watching, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit.